It's time for a look back at our top stories of the week. In St. John Parish, hundreds of folks are trying to decide what they can salvage after Hurricane Francine left a path of damage. Some folks are now forced to toss out years of memories. Eleanor Tabone spoke with folks cleaning up in Laplace. For 40 years, Lorraine and Valmontine Lewis have lived in their Laplace home. This time, it just like came straight in from somewhere. The pair have weathered many storms. That's the quickest I ever seen it. And I've been through about four storms since I've been in La Plata. But Francine, they say, damaged everything. Eight inches of water flowed into their beloved home. The aftermath inside, the carpet now ripped up, the sheetrock removed, and now they say they're battling growing mold. Everything is damaged that I got. Mm -hmm. Everything. My furniture, my cabinets, some of my clothes. Next door, it's a similar tale. Everything in the garage kind of lost, like a wash machine, uh, ceiling fans that we had stacked in there, never had getting ready to pull it up. According to the parish, 300 homes across St. John the Baptist were damaged, 100 of them with flood damage. Unfortunately, what we typically see by way of flooding is by storm surge. Um, this storm was a little different. We didn't see that storm surge flooding that we typ typically would, but because of the high amounts of rainfall in a short period of time, we saw some flooding in just some pockets of low-lying areas. We had flooding a couple of times, but it always rises, and you could see it rising this time. It just like came straight in from somewhere. Parish President Jacqueline Hotard says the parish is working with residents who experience damage. We are constantly identifying ways to make some improvements, whether it's just some localized pump stations, any types of improvements, or assisting homeowners with elevation if they're eligible for an um, elevation grant. For the Lewises, Francine's power may have been their final straw. This time, I think we're getting a little too old for this. It's just too much. We can't do it all. For 40 years, they shared their lives together inside these four walls. Now, all their loving memories and collectibles tossed on the curb, ready for collection, come Friday morning. That insurance so high, we can't afford it. In Laplace, Eleanor Tabone, WWL, Louisiana. The University of New Orleans is back in growth mode after some lean years with dwindling enrollment. UNO announced significant increases in the number of new freshmen and transfer students for the fall semester compared to last year. As Paul Murphy explains, recruitment is part of the school's lesson plan. University of New Orleans students are back on campus for the fall semester, with UNO still grappling with a $15 million budget cut because of lower enrollment, university officials have newfound optimism. They announced new freshmen were up 20% and transfer students jumped 60% compared to last fall. Theo Grant transferred to UNO this semester from a junior college in Texas to play basketball and further his higher education. You know, just viewing, you know, the campus and, you know, just coming on a visit to, you know, just, uh, you know, just see the overall, you know, aspect of the school, I feel like, you know, it was just the best fit for me, you know, as far as ball and, you know, academics. Madison Wynn is a freshman art student from Marrero. When I, like, went to orientation and I met the professors, the professors are really nice, and um, the clubs and stuff were really interesting, so that made me, like, more confident with my decision. University officials hope to build on these recent successes as they double down on efforts to bolster student enrollment here at UNO. Obviously we were delighted to see those numbers uh, when we were when we went through our enrollment uh, data and such. Randall Langston is UNO's new vice president of enrollment management. He was hired to improve enrollment which dropped from a high of about 17,000 in 2003 to about 6,500 students today. As we connect with students, both here in New Orleans area, we we're reaching out to students in Mississippi and Texas, Alabama areas as well. Langston can also count on some of the new privateers to help sell potential students on the university. I feel like, you know, just, you know, it's a great atmosphere, you know, great teachers, you know, beautiful lakefront. You can come, you know, to just, you know, be a part of this, you know, school. Paul Murphy, WWL, Louisiana.
Cells with no doors, constant overcrowding, and a facility not just falling apart, but also sinking into the ground. Those are concerns from the new Washington Parish Sheriff about the jail he's in charge of operating. We took a look at these reoccurring problems and the new push to get them resolved. Inside the Washington Parish Jail, Sheriff Jason Smith says there's a problem. It's been a historical problem for as long as anybody seems to be able to remember it's been a problem. Smith says overcrowding in the jail that sits in downtown Franklinton has gotten worse in recent years. Black B. With 144 beds, the jail meant for pretrial detention currently houses about 175 detainees. We've given them mats, they sleep on the floor, they find a place. Um, looks like a homeless encampment in a lot of ways and we're trying to mitigate that. To help, about 30 detainees are being housed in other jurisdictions. Smith, who became sheriff in July, says the realities of the jail are more problematic than he imagined. In addition to overcrowding, he says cell doors were removed by the previous administration and thrown away. Those are just issues on the inside. Water got up to this line here. 2016. Built in the early 80s, Smith says the elevated jail's location near the Bogachitta River makes it prone to flooding. He says it's even sinking into the ground. It's not a bedrock foundation. You know, we're, the concrete is cracking apart. So how many more years can we get out of it? I don't know. How, how long can you drive a car with the engine light on? While Smith is in charge of operating the jail, the parish is in charge of maintaining it. Well, I'm real proud of what we've accomplished in the last several years over there. We've invested over $2 million in improving the, the quality of jail and the administrative offices for the sheriff. That money was approved before Parish President Ryan Seal took office in January. He says it was used on new HVAC systems, kitchen, laundry, and medical facilities. Seal says he's committed to working with the sheriff to address overcrowding. We're on the same page here. We, you know, we've acknowledged the problem and trying to work the problem to give it to a solution that would be, that'd be satisfactory to everyone involved. For Smith, that would be a new jail in a different location. Neither he nor Seal are in favor of raising taxes to pay for one, though. I'm trying to put pressure on legislators. You know, we spend a lot of money on a lot of things. This is the thing that we need the most in the parish. Smith says it'll be years before there's a new jail. In the meantime, he's focused on making it work with what he's got. We had gotten to this part over years of neglect, uh, years of disinterest from the administration. Smith says it won't be solved overnight but vows it will be solved. Mike McDaniel, WWL, Louisiana. Moving can be downright stressful and could possibly cost more than expected. That's what happened to one local woman. Our Rachel Hanley has some tips, so you're not taken by surprise too. This is my end of tour award from when I was stationed at the Pentagon. When Shelby Nay made the jump from Dallas to New Orleans last month, she wasn't worried about the move. I've done it in the Navy six, seven times, so it, it can't be that hard. It can't be that bad. <laughs> <laughs> a well-known nationwide moving company quoted her about $3,000 for 570 cubic feet of boxes and furniture. She signed a contract. Then when the movers showed up, she says they were from a different company. She also says they told her she'd need to pay for 1,100 cubic feet, almost double. I've never had 1,100 cubic feet of anything. Like, it's just me. Even when I, it's just me. She only had a few days to get to New Orleans before her new job started. And she says she felt like her hands were tied. So she paid it. Then once her stuff was in the truck, she got an even bigger number. Prior to uh, leaving, they were like, okay, so whenever you get your stuff, you're gonna owe us another almost two grand. Two, almost two grand. There's a lot of money that had been, has been lost on a situation like this. Cynthia Albert with the Better Business Bureau says Nay's experience is very common. Last year, the BBB got almost 6,000 reports from people who felt that a moving company or its contractors had charged them unfairly. The big one that we've seen is that they get to the destination, then they say there is an extra fee to unload this. And that's what Nay says happened when she got to New Orleans. The mover arrived with her things about two weeks after her delivery date. Then she says he tried to charge her more before he'd unload it, based on things like her stairs and the size of her street, which she says she had already talked with the company about ahead of time. That's when she called the police. The uh, police officer shows up. Police officer is basically like, I got nothing. This happens every day. This happens. He said it even happened to him. 
Albert's advice is to do as much research as you can before you hire a company. Make sure they have an insurance policy in writing and document everything along the way. But above all, leave yourself as much time as possible. Don't be in a rush. Try to plan ahead if you can. Uh, if not, if these um, different things come about before you move, you just know not to go with them. In the end, the officer made the mover take the amount Nay had agreed on and bring her things in. By the end of the move, she had spent about $7,000, more than three times her initial quote. I feel taken advantage of, and I know there are a lot of people that have been taken advantage of, like myself. And as she finally settles into her new home, she hopes talking about her experience will help others who are packing their first box. Rachel Handley, WWL Louisiana. Tulane announced the largest single gift in the history of the university. It has now led the university to name its School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine after the donor. As Paul Murphy explains, the money the school received is a game changer when it comes to medical research. The name of Tulane University School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine will now include the name Celia Scott Weatherhead. Wednesday, Tulane announced the Cleveland-based philanthropist and Newcomb graduate has now pledged $160 million to the university. This includes a new gift to help fund population health programs and research at the school's downtown campus. Celia's gift will establish the School of Public Health as one of the top programs in the world. They will have a monumental real-world impact improving and saving lives both here in Louisiana and across the globe. Mrs. Weatherhead was at the announcement event but declined to make any comments. She said in a written statement, I am thrilled to support the university's goals and long-term strategy for educating public health professionals, empowering groundbreaking research, and building a healthier world, starting with the city of New Orleans, but aiming for global results. Celia Scott Weatherhead's gift is awe-inspiring because of the magnitude of what it will do. Weatherhead's contribution will provide seed funding for research in areas such as cancer control, climate change, health equity, and the use of artificial intelligence to study population health. University officials said the money would also be used to increase scholarships and attract leading experts to the school. Celia Scott Weatherhead has been an engaged, devoted, beloved alumnus of Tulane. Has she and her late husband, Albert, have supported this institution across the university. Tulane officials did not disclose the exact dollar amount of Mrs. Weatherhead's latest contribution to the university, but said it will impact the school across the board going forward. This is a great day for Tulane University, but let me also underscore it's a great day for New Orleans and Louisiana um, and health outcomes uh, in, this, in this region. Uh, we've got to do better. In downtown New Orleans, Paul Murphy, WWL, Louisiana.